Hello and welcome back to my channel and happy almost new year. Speaking of new years, today I'm going to be talking about why new year's resolutions tend to fail. Now you'd think I would like new year's resolutions, wanting to go like into the healthcare field. you think I'd be happy about like a time of year where a lot of people have like health and fitness related goals, but I actually really dislike them for some reason. Well, not for some reason, I know why. I actually really dislike them for a lot of reasons. And the big reason being that a lot of times they fail through not much of the fault of the person setting them, but just because of cultural expectations of these big but nebulous goals, and then a lot of marketing schemes that are just doomed to fail from the beginning, and things like that, that just make people end up feeling bad about themselves instead of actually moving them towards the goal they had set. So I wanted to talk about why you might be failing your New Year's resolution, whether it's the one you set last year or the one you're about to set for this coming year, if you do still set one, I don't even bother setting one anymore, and what you can do to change that outcome. So the first reason that a lot of people fail their New Year's resolutions is because they are very vague. If you don't know what you're actually aiming for, how do you know A, when you're there, and B, how to get there? So if your New Year's resolution is just to lose weight, you could go take a dump and have lost weight and you've met your goal. But that's not really what you mean and that's not really what you want. So setting goals that are very specific will help you out a lot here. So having something that you're really actually aiming for and having things that can be measured and more within one can be helpful as well. Since weight loss is a very popular one, that's an example that I'm going to use um, most thoroughly throughout this video. So for example, someone can say, I want to lose 50 pounds. But they can also have other goals like I want to lose five inches off my waist or I want to go down two pant sizes. Having other metrics to measure your progress in can be very helpful as well, especially because if you start working out to lose weight and you haven't worked out in a long time, you can start getting more inflamed, you can start building some muscle, you can start having some things that will make the scale look like it's going up when really you're not gaining fat, you're just retaining water, or you're a little inflamed, or maybe you've even put on a little bit of muscle. Things like that. So having a specific things of I want to lose a certain amount of weight and then other ways to track your progress aside from just looking at the scale. Second reason why a lot of people end up failing their New Year's resolutions is because they feel overwhelmed and then they quit. And I can't really blame people for this. A lot of people tend to set very big goals for New Year's resolutions because you have an entire year to get them done. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that's a great idea to aim for something really big. Aiming for something really big can take several years to complete, so trying to smush everything into a one-year time frame that's kind of arbitrary anyway isn't a great place to start. But feeling overwhelmed can also be due to a lack of a plan. Again, if your goal is to lose weight, then you can think, okay, I just need to, I need to overhaul everything, everything's gonna change, like I can't do anything that I used to or I used to like anymore, like those can all be very overwhelming thoughts. And then especially as you become stressed, you don't really rise to the occasion, you fall back to your level of training. So if your level of training are those old habits, then you'll fall back to those old habits, which everyone does very often. It's totally normal to do that. But where your real success will come in is if you start training new habits that are very small changes and that are not overwhelming to you. So having those small little lifestyle changes that you don't really feel like is doing enough or is doing a whole lot or doing anything at all, really are the key to long-term success for things even beyond weight loss. So things like, I'm going to start drinking one more bottle of water and one less bottle of soda. Very small change, but that is something that you can start falling back to as your normal instead of trying to do a whole 21-day reset where you don't eat anything that you used to or that you used to enjoy and everything is different and you're grocery shopping in aisles that you've never shopped in before because you're getting all this weird food that isn't familiar to you. After that 21 days, you haven't really trained yourself into any new habits, you're going to fall back to your level of training, which is what you were doing before that 21 day reset. That's another reason that I don't really like New Year's resolutions is because they are a huge marketing cash grab for the fitness industry. 
it was true, you know, people are always coming out with their six week challenge, 12 week transformation challenge, things like that. And New Year's is a ripe time to get people sucked into that it's because of course people are setting all these goals anyways to lose weight, get healthy, get more fit, whatever. And you can promise that your program is going to do that. And it's so easy. You just have to buy the tools from me and I can make it happen for you when really it takes longer than six weeks or even 12 weeks to really make lasting lifestyle changes for many different goals, again, beyond just weight loss and fitness. So, but do find some of that scammy marketing just rubs me the wrong way. So that's one other really big reason that I don't really like New Year's resolutions all that much anymore. I thought they were like fun when I was younger, but now I'm like, oh, I really feel like a lot of them just kind of set people up to fail and then people feel like a failure and they feel like they haven't made progress. And so that leads to people to stop trying, which isn't cool. Aside from feeling overwhelmed, you can also feel very discouraged. Now this doesn't usually happen in the first month or so. So it doesn't usually happen within like January because a lot of people do make New Year's resolutions, so it can be really easy in the beginning to feel like you have a lot of support, to feel like you have a gym buddy, to feel like everyone is in it together. But then as people start falling off the wagon, you might feel very alone and unsupported and discouraged. Or even if you have a great support network, if you don't feel like you're making progress towards your goal, that can be very discouraging as well. So this is where what I was saying earlier about having other ways to measure your success is very important. Having little like miniature milestones and other ways of measuring change is very important for these big long-term goals because of course you're not going to get to a big long-term goal overnight, but you can still notice some changes along the way. And if you are noticing those and being happy with those and really taking the time to appreciate that change and that progress that you have made, it can make it a lot easier to not to get discouraged because you're not at your final goal yet. So again, using weight loss as an example, you can have mile markers of when you want to lose X amount of pounds by. You can say, well, I want to lose the first 30 of that 50 pounds by July. In the first half of the year, I want to lose the first 30 pounds and then lose the last 20 in the last half of the year, things like that. And again, like I was saying earlier, other metrics like inches off your waist or pant sizes or whatever, or if you have a more fitness related goal, then it can be, well, I really want to do 10 unassisted body weight pull-ups by the end of the year. So by the middle of the year, I want to be able to do five of those. Or even two months in, I want to be able to pull up 80% of my body weight, things like that, that can keep you noticing that you're making progress because you are likely making progress if you're taking step towards your goal but if you're not looking at it and you're not finding ways to measure it and appreciate it it can go unseen and then you can feel very discouraged and one of the last reasons that a lot of people will fail their new year's goals is because they're really not ready to change or they're in a position where change is pretty much impossible for them at the moment whether circumstances outside of their control or even sometimes inside their control it doesn't really matter but sometimes people really aren't ready to change and i think having the expectation of everyone setting new year's resolutions especially again with fitness and weight loss being really common ones don't set new year's resolutions just because other people expect it of you um, if you're not ready to change if you're not ready to make these big changes in your life you can always do it later you can start a year-long timeline journey in the middle of July. You don't have to start changing things in January when we're just getting getting over a pandemic. Hopefully the vaccines all go fine. Just getting over a pandemic. A lot of people have lost jobs. Like this is not a great time for some people to be making dramatic changes in their life or even small changes in their life. So if you're not ready to change what you think you want to change about yourself, that's okay. You can always come back to it later. So one other way to combat the vagueness or long timeline of a goal is to make smart goals. Now, if you, um, you've probably seen this before, a lot of people heard about this in like middle or high school, but if it's been a long time since you have heard it or you never have heard it before, then let's go over what a SMART goal is. It's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T, goals. So the S is for specific. Again, you don't want your goals to be too vague. I want to lose weight. How much? I want to get fit. What does that mean for you? I want to be more financially secure. What does that mean? Do you want to have a certain amount in your savings? Do you want to pay down a credit card to a certain amount? Set specific goals for yourself. The 
um, is for measurable. And again, I, rec I recommend having more than one way to sort of measure your progress. So again, if it's weight loss, you can go by inches around your waist, pant sizes, you know, bra sizes, top size, whatever, aside from just weight on the scale. If you're going for fitness goals, you can say, well, I want to reach, you know, to 10% of, of my goal like each month and slowly work up to it, things like that. Make little milestones for yourself so that you can measure progress along the way and so that your final goal is measurable so you know when you've reached it. A is for attainable. You definitely want a goal that is actually possible for you to get to. Um, I mean, if your goal is to like lose 100 pounds in a year, that is a lot of weight and well, technically possible. Uh, not very likely. And actually, the A and the R go together pretty well. It's attainable and reasonable. So yes, it is possible to lose 100 pounds in a calendar year, but is that reasonable for you? Is that something that you think will be a good idea for you to try and push yourself to achieve? Because there are 52 weeks in a year and losing up to two pounds a week is generally considered healthy. So yes, it is possible to healthfully lose 100 pounds in a year, but Again, that would be losing two pounds every single week almost with, you know, no day off for like a birthday or a wedding or special events. So think, is that reasonable for you? Now, one other thing you can do with the attainable and reasonable is think beyond just a calendar year. You know, New Year's resolutions usually are framed in that year timeline, but it doesn't have to be. You can set long-term goals for yourself that are going to take two years or even five to seven years if you want. So think about what is actually a reasonable ask of yourself and really, really have a heart to heart with yourself if you think you can keep up with a vigorous timeline or if maybe you need to take it a little bit slower and just keep making small consistent changes that you can keep up. But the last one is T for time bound. You do want to have a timeline of your goal. Because if you don't have a timeline of when you want it to end, you can very much fall into the habit, like I tend to, of, well, I'll start it later. I'll start it on Monday. I'll start it tomorrow. I'll start it after that party where I'm going to go and eat a lot of food. You know, things like that can happen. So do give yourself a time frame. But remember, it does not have to be within a year. It can be shorter than that. It can be longer than that. And you should be making little increments of time. Check in with yourself and check in with some of those smaller markers of progress, like, well, I can't do 10 pull-ups yet, but I can do four. That's awesome. Make sure you're making times to check in with yourself and using those other ways of measuring progress towards your final goal to keep yourself encouraged and to keep yourself on track with your timeline that you want to achieve your goal in. I hope this video was helpful to at least someone. Thank you so much for watching. I highly recommend you hit that subscribe button and I also recommend you go and follow me on Instagram if you want pictures of food and my nasty face in the gym. Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy new year.